Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is creating a web pages, forms, get versus post. So if you've seen the forms videos, we've talked about how to create a form on a web page and use it to uh, create some elements that allow the user to enter information into the web page and submit it to the web server. I mentioned that there are a number of different attribute value pairs that can go on the form. And one of them is the action. The action is going to determine what actually happens on the server when the user submits the information. And so typically this is gonna be the URL of the location of the program, which will respond when the user submits the information in the form. So in this particular case, I'm using a relative reference, example.php. And so this means that there's a PHP program sitting on the server and the name of that PHP program is example.php and it's located in the exact same location as the HTML file that has this form on here. If you're not actually working with a uh, program on the server, you actually do have some options. Uh, so you can use e a mail to URL and if the user has their web browser set up to interact with their email system, uh, this would actually email the information in the form to you. Um, Stanford also has uh, their own special sets ups that can get you uh, information from a form uh, sent to you without actually doing any programming on your own. But for now, we're going to take a look at what actually happens when uh, we're working with a form um, and the user is actually submitting information to the server. That's the most common case. Okay, so that's the action. But there's also this method listed here, and this turns out to be quite important. It's important both uh, when you're actually trying to set up a form for actual interaction with a real web server, it's very important that you get this setting right. Um, it also has a number of implications uh, in terms of when the users interact with the form. And I think you'll discover when we talk about this that you have run into these situations before and maybe wondered why uh, the computer's doing certain things in some cases with the form and other things in other cases with the form. And it turns out that this setting has uh, some very visible effects to the user of the web page. Basically what the method controls is how the information is sent to the web server. Uh, this has important implications for bookmarking and emailing web pages. Um, so if you've ever tried to email a friend uh, the results of a search and they weren't able to actually get those results. Uh, what was going on was the post uh, versus get here. Um, and it also has implications in terms of whether or not the state of the server is changed uh, by the submission of the form. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first part here, um, how the information is being sent to the server and uh, the side effect on bookmarking or email on the web page URL. Okay, so here is uh, an actual form on amazon.com uh, and I've taken out part of the, uh, the form tag here. Uh, so here's the actual action and the method is actually get. If we look down at the bottom, you can see the URL that is generated when somebody clicks on the submit button here or the, the little actually the little search icon on the far right of the search bar there. And we can see that the action there, slash s slash ref equals nb, underscore sb underscore nos, that's our relative reference. And uh, if you look at the actual URL at the bottom of this uh, image here, you can see that that gets tacked on to www.amazon.com, which is what you'd expect with a relative reference. So it's saying, hey, uh, when somebody clicks on the little search icon here to submit the form information, um, go ahead and go to this particular location as specified by the action um, on the amazon.com server. But if you look past the, uh, the nb underscore sb underscore nos, you'll see that there's some additional information here. And that additional information is actually uh, determined by the, uh, the selection of the user on that select tag and whatever the user has entered into the text field. And so uh, the first thing we have here is the URL equals search dash alias. Uh, and so it turns out that that electronics um, that we're looking at there, that's actually part of a select tag. And the name of the select tag is URL. And uh, as you may recall from the forms video, when information is sent from the, uh, the web browser to the server, uh, and we've got a bunch of elements on our web page, it's sent in the form of name of element followed by value of uh, the element, current value of the element. So in this particular case, the name of the element is URL, 
And the search dash alias equals electronics is the value of the option, the electronics option that the user has selected here. So uh, what's happening here is this information on the user's current selection is being sent to the web server and it's being sent by attaching it to the URL itself. And if you're wondering what that percent three D is, um, that's actually an encoding for that equal sign there. You know, I mentioned before that you want to be really careful in terms of uh, what sort of punctuation you put inside of your um, your file names. And as I've recommended before, I recommend you stick to lowercase uh, letters, uh, digits, zero through nine, and dashes. Uh, things like spaces, or in this case, the equal sign, can get transmitted, but it does get converted using this uh, URL encoding. So in this particular case, 3D is the hexadecimal uh, encoding for an ASCII equal sign. And so you get a percent 3D set uh, in place of the actual equal sign when this goes to the server. And then the text field there where I've typed an iPad, uh, the name of that text field is field keywords. And then of course the value that I've typed in there is iPad. And so you can see at the end of the URL, um, it, it indicates that I've, I am submitting this information to the server using uh, with the value for field keywords of equals iPad. And so the basic idea here is the URL here includes the information that I've entered into the form. And so there's, there's a number of implications of this. Uh, if I were to bookmark this web page, uh, what's going to get bookmarked is this URL. And this URL includes the information I entered into the form. So uh, if I go ahead and bookmark this web page and then I go back to that bookmark uh, in a day or two, I'm going to get the results of the original search. It's going to know that I was searching in the electronics um, section of Amazon and that I was looking for an iPad. Similarly, if I were to email this uh, URL to a friend, um, and they were to click on the link and in their uh, email system, uh, it would include the information from the form that I entered. So they're going to see the exact same results as if they had entered this information into this form. Now, let's say we go ahead and change the method on the form here um, from get to post. And uh, I do want to emphasize that uh, Amazon uses get here, but if you were to go ahead and switch this to post, uh, we're going to get some different results here. Uh, what happens with post is the information is sent to the web server in a different form. It's not included in the URL. Uh, it's actually stored internally in the, uh, the HTTP request, and um, it's not directly visible just by looking at the URL. And so the URL with the post request here um, and I, I do, again, want to emphasize that this is a change I have made. This is not actually what occurs on the Amazon website. The Amazon website uses get. Uh, but if we were to use this post request, notice that the URL here down at the bottom of the page does not include any indication that I'm searching in the electronic section or that I entered the iPad uh, as the keyword that I'm searching for. Instead, it just has the, uh, the action there tacked on to the end of the server name, uh, and there's no additional information on the URL. So the implication here is if I were to go ahead and bookmark this particular web page uh, and I were to go back to that bookmark, it wouldn't know that uh, I was looking in the electronic section and it wouldn't know I was looking for an iPad. All it would know is that I had submitted a search request to Amazon, but it would have no information on what that search was. And so I would not see the results of that search. Um, and so uh, if I use a post request instead of a get request uh, in my form and somebody tries to bookmark the results, they're not gonna be able to bookmark the results. Similarly, if I go ahead and take this URL here and I email it to a friend, instead of them seeing the results of my looking for an iPad in the electronic section, they're just going to uh, see some indication that uh, you know I had performed a search on Amazon or they might even get an error message from Amazon saying, hey, uh, I see you're trying to do search, but I don't understand what you're trying to search for. And that's because with both the bookmarking and when we take the URL and we email it to people, the only information being stored by the web browser for the bookmark is the URL. And of course, the only information that the, our friend gets is the URL I've emailed them. So when the information is encoded into the URL with the GET request, that's great. Uh, and people can see um, exactly what I was looking for and the information I entered into the form. Uh, but if we're using the post request, 
that information is not included in the URL. And so we don't get any of the results. Uh, the URL does not include any of the information about what I entered in the form. It only knows that I tried to enter some information, but not, not actually what was associated with it. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, summary here. Um, so we've seen that get versus post controls how the information is sent to the server. Either the information is encoded into the URL or it's uh, enclosed within the, uh, the actual HTTP request and it's not included as part of the URL. And as a consequence, um, I can bookmark or email uh, URLs using the get request and people will get the actual results as I expect. Whereas if the form is submitted using a post request, uh, that information is not included in the URL, and so it, it's lost. Um, there's a second implication, though, of get versus post, and arguably this is more important, uh, but it's something that's not normally seen by, uh, by users, but it's very important for getting right in terms of if you're actually setting up your server uh, and your web pages, and that is... Uh, setting get versus post determines whether or not the state of the server may be changed. So get requests are what we refer to as item potent. And what item potent means is they do not change the state of the server. And so the idea here is if I make a get request and I make another get request, uh, you know, an hour or two later, um, that the get request should get the exact same result. So uh, if I go ahead and make a GET request on Amazon looking for iPads, and then I make a, another request uh, 15 minutes later, um, I should get the same results. That's the implication of using a GET request. And in fact, the web browser is welcome to cache the results in the browser cache, uh, which means it's going to store the uh, HTTP um, and any associated files like CSS files or image files um, from the original request, and it's able to look at that, and um, you know there may be some sort of expiration date on that, but uh, it's able to look at that and say, oh, you made this request 15 minutes ago. I still have the results from the last request. They haven't expired yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and display the previous request. Post requests, in contrast, are not item potent. This means they can change the state of the server. So let's take a look at uh, some usage scenarios of forms uh, and whether or not we would want the result to be item potent or not. So suppose I look up a word on uh, in a dictionary or on Wikipedia. Um, do I expect the results to change? Well, hopefully not. I mean, dictionaries do change, language does change, but it doesn't change very frequently. So, you know, if I, if I make a request to dictionary.com looking at a particular word and then I make a request uh, 12 hours later, I should get the exact same results. There should be no change uh, of the state of the server. Um, and it's certainly my request is not changing the state of the server. Uh, so this is, this is an important point. It's not that the state of the server can't be changed. It's that my submission here is not changing the state of the server. So, you know, maybe uh, at the end of the year, dictionary.com decides, hey, this word is being used in different ways, so they go ahead and change their information on the server, but it's not like I am submitting new information that's changing the state of the server. Similarly for Wikipedia, assuming I'm doing a lookup, uh, you know, that's going to be item potent. Uh, you know, if I look up information about um, uh, Stanford University and I look up that information a little bit later, uh, the results should be the same. Now, if I were to be a Wikipedia editor and I were actually to modify that web page, well, that's a different request. And so the idea, the way this would work is that when I'm looking up information on Wikipedia, that needs to be a get request. When I'm changing the information on Wikipedia, that actually needs to be a post request because it is making a change on the server. Let's say I order something from Amazon. That needs to be a post request because I'm changing the state of the server. The server's database is being modified to include information about this new order that has come in. So if I put in a get request instead of a post request, that will cause problems. Similarly, if I'm posting something on an electronic bulletin board, I expect other people to see it. That means there needs to be a change on the server in order for people to see what I posted there. Same thing if you're posting on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. Okay, one thing that you may notice with post requests is uh, if you reload a web page which has a post request, you may get this, uh, this dialog box saying, 
hey, do you want to resubmit this information? And so this is happening because the post requests are changing the state of the server, or at least potentially changing the state of the server. And so, you know, if I uh, order an iPad at Amazon and then uh, I reload the web page, what it's saying is, hey, the first time you uh, clicked on that link, you ordered a new iPad from Amazon. Um, you're trying to reload the web page. Should I tell Amazon you want to order a second iPad? Um, and so this is in contrast with what happens with a GET request. With a GET request, I'm just getting information from the server. There's no change in the server status. And uh, so if I reload a web page with a GET request, the web browser is like, that's all good. I can get you the same results. And in fact, I may have the results sitting in the cache. So um, when you see that, do you want to resubmit? Um, and you, 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 know, you may notice that sometimes you get that, do you want to resubmit dialogue? And sometimes you don't. And you may be wondering what the difference is. Well, the difference is that uh, that form is either marked with method equals get or method equals post. And depending upon which of that settings is being used, uh, you will either, the web browser will either be like, it's all good. I can just redisplay the results or it's saying, hey, this actually changes the state of the server. We already did that once. Do you want me to change the state of the server again? Um, and so that's what's going on there. Uh, now, it is important that you use the proper method type for the proper usage. Um, using a GET request when you're, you actually want to use a POST request will cause problems. Uh, if the result of a GET request is still in the web browser cache, as we mentioned before, a second GET request may not be received by the web server. And so the idea here is uh, if you actually want the state of the server to be changed, you need to use the POST request. Uh, if somebody ordered something from my online store uh, and we use a GET request, uh, I can ignore the fact that the get request is supposed to be item potent and I can go ahead and grab that information on the server and I can update my order database. But if they were to do a second get request to order a second version of that item, the web browser would be completely acting appropriately if it were to say, hey, you already made this uh, get request yesterday. Um, I still have the results in the web browser cache. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's still valid. I'm just going to redisplay that. I'm not even going to bother contacting the server to tell the server that you know you're you're uh, resubmitting this, this GET request because the meaning of a GET request is I'm only returning information. I'm not actually changing anything on the server. So, you know, if you want to or need to have the information on the server changed, make sure you use a POST uh, method on your form and not the GET method on your form. Okay, so conclusions. Use a GET request when you can. It's much more convenient for the user to, uh, to have that information there in the URL uh, and to be able to bookmark it and email it to people and things like that. Um, use a POST request when you must. Uh, so uh, if the submission of the form needs to change something on the state of the server, uh, you definitely do not want that to, uh, to happen with a GET request because as we saw, that can cause problems. All right, so that's it for forms. I'll talk to you all soon.